When I was 17 years old, I went to visit my grandmother. I remember sitting with her on her veranda, sharing this large bowl of mangoes and, and watermelons. And the silence was broken by the sound of a helicopter flying into our village. I ran out into the courtyard and I noticed a shower of white pieces of paper raining from the sky and small little packets that turned out to be condoms. I grabbed one of the papers as it flew by and realized it was an AIDS awareness campaign by World Health. I watched the other adults around me doing the same thing, looking at the cartoon characters, scrunching up the papers, and they were ready to light their fires. I watched the kids running around the village because they'd found these balloons. I was horrified. And then they started running these workshops in the village square, educating people about the spread of AIDS. And they would take a broomstick and put the condom on a broomstick and speak in English. Two weeks later, every single hut in our village had a condom with a broomstick behind the door to prevent AIDS. <laughs> that is when the activist in me came alive. I remember writing to World Health and I told them my observations and I asked them to sponsor me to write a play with an AIDS theme. And I went back to everything my grandmother taught me to use the power of story to educate. By the time I was 19, I had created an all-women's theatre group called Just for Women Theatre. We were five girls, feisty, spreading political messages through plays. We would run workshops in the vernacular languages like Shona and Devele. And our mission was to educate that rural woman who had never gone to school and conscientize her about the spread of the AIDS virus. I learned so many things at this time. And I used everything that I was born into, and in particular, Ubuntu. So you're asking, what is Ubuntu? Ubuntu Ngamuntu Ngavantu says a person is only a person through other people. I am because you are. Ubuntu is the spiritual foundation of most African societies. And it's enshrined in this belief that if you live with a radical connection to others, you can solve humanity's problems very easily. I moved to New Zealand 20 years ago and became a serial social entrepreneur. And I had a vision that I would make money that I could give away and change the world. One of my most successful business ventures is called Walk on the Wild Side Tours. I created the Symbiotic Tourism Company, where I take people to Zimbabwe on a 10-day trip that is life-changing. You spend five days in our community, eating the local food, sleeping in a mud hut. In the last five days, we take you on a magical trip to the Victoria Falls, all five star. You go bungee jumping off the Victoria Falls Bridge, white water rafting on the Zambezi River. You go walking in the bush with these amazing lions. With the proceeds of this business, which is a for-profit business, I created an organization that supports the children in my village. I took over a primary school with 350 kids, and we started a feeding program to make sure that all the children got something to eat before they go to school. We got the community to help us in the making of the bricks and started a microloan program. We trained the women in the community to cut and make the school uniforms and created employment. And it has been a fantastic 20-year journey until in June 2017, I collapsed of heart failure in a rice field while on holiday in Bali, Indonesia. I had just turned 50. And I remember the angiogram as the cardiologist injected 
the dye into my veins to check if my coronary arteries were clear. And I was watching the monitor in front of me and looking at my heart as the dye rushed into all of my veins and my arteries. And I had a conversation with my heart. And I said, why? Why are you doing this to me? I'm not ready to die. I'm not finished yet. And my heart answered back ever so gently. And it said, Gertrude, you have done this to me. I pump oxygen and nutrients into every single cell in your body to keep you alive, but you've forgotten to take care of me. My illness was a blessing. I came out of that experience with so much knowledge, so much understanding. I realized that the human race is like an organism. We are one. But we forget that what happens to me affects you and what happens to you affects me. Through all of the mistakes that I've made, I gained a lot of understanding. I was going back to home to Zimbabwe thinking I had the solution to all of our problems. I was going back to Zimbabwe with this Western perspective of what they needed, forgetting that that was the very reason why I became an activist in the first place. I did things with no consultation with the community, and so I learned, I learned a lot of lessons. But the biggest lesson that I learned is that African people have been sold a lie. Somewhere in our history, we were told that we are poor and we believed it. Tell me, what does Africa not have? From gold to diamonds to minerals, you name it. The missing piece for Africa is education. And I believe that if we educate the next generation, things will change. So I'm here to appeal to all of you, but especially to people of African descent. Let's go back home and make a difference in our communities. My grandmother used to say that for a tree to survive, it has to scatter its seed as far away from it as possible for it to thrive. We are Africa's seeds. We're time travelers. We are going to take Africa on a quantum leap into the next century. And I'm inviting anyone who has a passion for Africa to join us because Africa is the cradle of humanity. So, I've recently got married. I got a second chance in love in this magical castle in Poland. <laughs> My amazing husband, Dariusz Kanitsky, is sitting right here in the front seat. <laughs> and <laughs> for this one day, I felt like a queen. I decided to adorn myself with my tribal markings. The sign on my hand is the koro that belongs to the Maori tribes of New Zealand, which is now home. The design on my chest is inspired by the Aboriginal tribes of Australia. The zigzag pattern on my hand are the geometric shapes of the Shona tribe, which I was born into. And if you turn it the other way around, it represents the crown that I was wearing on my wedding day to represent Poland. And the dots around my eyes belong to the Nguni people of Southern Africa. I realize that I am a sum total of every single person I've ever met. When you leave here today, you will take a piece of me with you home, and hopefully we'll get to connect, and I'll take a piece of you with me as well. After the wedding, I was so excited. I had all these amazing flowers. My husband knows I love roses. We had hundreds of pink and white flowers, and I wanted to take them home to New Zealand, but I can't. Two days later, I came up with this brilliant idea that I would break up all of the flowers and give them away. I made 150 small bouquets that were distributed in a hospice to women who were dying of cancer, to the local hospital maternity ward, to women who had had a baby or who were ill, 
And my wedding planner, Justina, came back totally transformed because she took her two little sons with her and she got to experience the power of giving. She took pictures and she sent these pictures to Magda, who was the lady who put together these flowers, our florist. And when she looked through the pictures, she saw an image of an old lady in the hospice who was her grandmother's best friend. Her grandmother had died in that room two months ago. So our flowers went full circle and gave back love and joy to the very woman who had made them. And then I realized that everything in this universe is connected. Everything is connected. And we sleepwalk through life most of the time, oblivious of the suffering and pain of people around us or people in other parts of the world. And because everything is connected, you have to stop and think. The next time you listen to the news and you hear that there are children being treated like animals and put in cages on the southern border of Mexico and the United States, listen, do something, think again. The next time that you hear that there are little girls from Africa who get pinned down by their mothers and their grandmothers and their aunts and go through the horrendous process of female genital mutilation, think again, please. They are our children. The next time you hear that there's a shooting, a mass shooting in a school, those are your children. Don't think that it's happening over the day. The difference between those kids and your child is timing, it's location. That's the only difference. Do a little something. Advocate. So, to install the Ubuntu operating system is very simple. Put your family first, your community next, and if you have something to spare, do something somewhere else in the world. Thank you. Oh, she's grabbed.